Holy cow, so I'm on the show. And there we go. Tick, 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 tick. What's up, everyone? Hey, hey, hey. It's Phil Gerbyshack, and we're ding, ding, ding in here. We're glad that you're here for another edition of Social Chatter. Hopefully at some point we uh, we get everybody on the show. Technical difficulties are what technical difficulties are. So let's uh, let's talk about what the heck we're, we're talking about this week. Uh, this week we've got some Pinterest changes, some Instagram changes, and we've got some changes with Facebook that can impact you. So we're looking forward to sharing all of that stuff here. But uh, right now, it looks like we're live, but we're having some some fun challenges. So, but until we get Christian here, I guess I'll do a little dance and we'll uh, we'll see what's up. So I'm gonna check on Facebook and see what's uh, see what's going on here. So hang on, let's see. It says we're live. There we go, Christian. There you are. Hey, how you doing? Sorry about that. I'm not sure. That was really strange. I was on screen, and then I was off screen. But that's the great thing. You know, that's the thing with live video. You know, you do have challenges here and there. Um, so here's the thing. Bottom line, it's live video. You have to roll with it. No problem. So Yeah, who cares, man? It's all good. So how are you doing? Good. Good week. good week. Yeah, good week. So I got my butt kicked yesterday by my trainer. So I'm a little sore than usual. But uh, I got my, uh, my Tigger coffee cup, right? I'm wired for another day. Very nice. Very nice. How about so you? By the way, who do we have this week on the show? Oh, my gosh. So, so excited to bring Alex back. So, Alex Abel, if you don't know Alex, he is freaking brilliant. He's a time traveler, and he started this cool new app called Lunch Pool so that you never have to be lonely unless you want to be at lunch again, which is going to revolutionize the way that people talk and think about lunches in corporate America and all around the world so you can actually get connected if you want to again you don't have to um at lunchtime it really it's really fantastic i really i really like it a lot very cool so i'm gonna go and bring on alex and uh we'll we'll get uh going this week so awesome alex, alex hey everybody how's it going what's up dude not much just hanging out you know yeah yeah ready so for ready for lunchtime there we go yeah you're always ready for lunchtime there lunch pool guy so hey, that's you know. cool Man, that's cool. So, hey, Tish Rosales is here. She says she had technical difficulties too. So, Alex, thanks for hanging with us, buddy. How's uh, how's life in, on the other side of Tampa? You're almost two miles away. So, oh, it's great. It's uh, <clears throat> my house has become kind of a war zone with the plague, I feel like. So, we started, uh, I have a one year old daughter. We started daycare a while back, and she's been going through the gamut. My dog's sick. My wife was sick. I'm sick. Ah. It's, it's, uh, it's been fun. So, Oh my gosh. Hopefully everybody else is staying safe. Hopefully it's a little bit less uh less of a quarantine issue on your side of town. <laughs> I hope so. Well, I saw you Monday for for lunch. We didn't we didn't use the lunch pool app, but we are going to talk about that a little later and what the app can do and how how awesome it is. So that's uh that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, and Tish Tish says it wasn't her, it was Steven. So thank you, Tish. Um so yeah, so we got a lot to talk about today, Alex. Talk to us uh real quick. Give us a quick overview on some of the work that you're doing here, because you're one of the best data storytellers that I that we know. Yeah. So, um, sorry, say the question again. I had a technical glitch. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. So I was talking about you know the fact you're a data storyteller. So tell oh, us yeah. a little bit about what the heck that means and and what you do each day at uh, at your day job in addition to the fun and lunch pool. Definitely. Yeah. So I work at uh, Ashley Furniture. Um, you know, huge global retail manu uh, manufacturer of furniture. Um, and I support the e-commerce initiative. So in e-commerce, there's a lot of uh, reports that need to be built, dashboards, so that people can make quick decisions. So, you know, I got brought onto the team to actually take some of that d data from different sources, make it, you know, arrange it into a very meaningful dashboard that's easy to understand and interpret. Um, and then from that, I even, you know, I'll do some insights and analysis and take it to the team and say, hey, we need to start making these adjustments or these changes um so it's it's a lot of fun it's a lot of my background i started in graphic design and then i got into uh to more social media marketing and then a little bit of uh conversion rate optimization so i get to use all of my past experience to really say okay here's not only the numbers but here's the story behind the numbers and you know you don't want to make up stories but you can really interpret the numbers 
um, in a number of different ways. So we do a lot of testing and we make sure that the numbers are, are not just sitting there, you know, gathering dust, but they're actually turning into action and, and impact. Awesome. Awesome. Really, man. I really like the idea of, you know, what you talked about there about, you know, taking action. And that's the key thing with business, you know, whether it's social media, e-commerce, digital marketing, you know, uh, building your website, any of that sort of thing that you need to do in your business. It's all about taking action, you know, and you don't have to complete it all right then, you know, but again, it's the taking that first step. And I think it's one of the hardest parts, I think, as a business owner. Yeah, no, I think that one of the big challenges I've seen over and over again in different businesses I've worked with is getting leadership aligned on one single number or, or a number of goals. Um, but really just prioritizing what what is what are we trying to accomplish here? What are the two or three main objectives and how can we break those down into uh, actionable, actionable steps? Because that's really where the data uh, you know, comes shines through because there's a lot of companies that have spent so long operating off of just executive intuition mm -hmm. and intuition goes a long way because you know leaders don't get into leadership positions without having you know that really strong core intuition but sometimes you have to challenge those assumptions and those intuitions and say look the numbers are really pointing to something vastly different we need to at least in inspect this um, and then one of one of the things that I love is bringing in qualitative data. So you you know you have your numbers, you have your analytics, um, you know in, in social media you have your insights dashboards and things like that. But there's nothing like going straight to the the consumer or the end user of your product or service and saying, "Tell me about your experience." And and then you can match that up with the numbers, and that's how you really craft a compelling story. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, lots of stuff there, man. And to th we're just excited you're going to bring some of that goodness to us today so that we can actually learn about, you know, what what you're seeing, what you think the future is is going to hold here. So we've got a lot to talk about. So, Alex, you we always play dealer's choice here. So as the guest, where would you like to go, buddy? What do you want to start with? Uh, let's, uh, I, I was reading in the news. They have some uh, some updates on uh, Instagram, it seems like. That sounds like a, a pretty cool start. Um I, I was. I don't know if you guys have read, but it looks like they're planning to kind of take on Pinterest, which is cool. I'm not too big into. I'm not a huge Pinteraster. Um, I tried. I tried Mantrist or Mintrist, whatever it was. Uh, the, <laughs> they tried to make something for men, but I don't think it was very successful. But um, but in Instagram, uh, you know, they in the past it seems like they took on uh, Snapchat. And Snapchat's kind of been floundering since. So. I'm interested to see how this plays out. Yeah, for sure. So, Christian, are you a big Pinterest guy? Are you you pinning some stuff? You know, what are you thinking? I do pin a bunch of things, but I would say, you know, I, I don't spend the majority of my time there. So, I, I'm very actually fascinated by this because I think Alex, you just made a great point, which is, you know, Facebook. They came on board. They then started borrowing, or you know, yeah, borrowing. I guess we could say features from Snapchat, and now, you know, now they're actually borrowing things from Pinterest, and I find that really fascinating. Um, because, you know, I guess in a way there's, you know, the whole originality thing and then also the long-term play. Now this actually gets into another topic that we have. And so I don't want to talk too much about that, but I, I think this is a really good move, uh, overall for Instagram, the ability to create collections to, to work with influencers or to have, you know, curated content potentially on your channel so that somebody doesn't have to go directly through all of your, you know, Instagram updates to find that one post that you want them to see. That's, I, I love it. Yeah, I also think from a shopping list perspective, I can totally see this plan very well. I can see making wish lists, you put that together. And now I like these shoes, but Alex says, no, no, these are the right shoes for you, man. You should check mm -hmm. these out. And these are pretty cool, almost like an immediate shopping thing where we can go, go, go. I think this is a great step towards more e-commerce. You can also put menus together. Think of them for restaurants and and grocery stores and places uh, where it's other types of things that that you might put together. And maybe maybe you can even put some recipes together. I can totally see Food Network making some play here, where they can put recipes together of different pictures of different ways that the recipes might have turned out. Like I saw yesterday, uh, one of the Instagrammers that I follow is called The Kitchen, and they mm -hmm. actually posted uh, four different meatloafs 
that were made. So I could totally see that coming together. You know, here's 17 favorite meatloafs. And if they ever make these stinking things searchable on the internet, instead of just on Instagram, I could yep. see this really, really being a game changer for Instagram. Yeah. It seems like they, you know, they've been trying to figure out their monetization strategy for a while. They had a lot of success once they merged with Facebook and bringing in the ads from that platform. Um, but like you said, e-commerce is huge. It's a, uh, you know, it's not going anywhere. So it's, it seems like they're definitely going to try to tap into that market. I, I would assume. Um, and, and one thing I was wondering is, you know, I think one of the the values of Pinterest is being able to bring in outside links. So I, I wonder if they're even going to try to delve mm -hmm. into that area to say, okay, not just photos that are curated, um, but he, here's some actual links from around the web. So I, I, do you have, do, do you think that they would even go in that route? Ooh, that would well, that would be that would definitely be different, right? I mean, that that's kind of goes against all that we love and know about Instagram now. But if yeah. they do that, that would be really, really interesting to do. And Christian, you were looking at the I see you were looking at the kitchen. It's K I T C H N, no no e there uh, for okay. the for, for the group that I was talking about. Um, so yeah, but we'll we'll see. I, I'm hoping hoping that they do not. Yeah, same here. Uh, yeah, I hope they don't because I got to tell you, one of the things that I like about Instagram, Instagram, yeah, I said <laughs> Instagram, right? Yeah, they already got you doing it. Yeah, yeah you, already for telling a merger. Yeah. That's it, right? So one of the things that I like about Instagram is that I can't go down too many rabbit holes. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that it actually purposely limits my time on platform, um, which, you know, it seems funny, but frankly, I, I just want to look at a couple pictures, check out a couple recipes and then move on. Yeah, no, I hear you on that. What do you think, Christian? I I hundred percent agree. I love the fact that you know with Instagram, I don't feel like I'm distracted. I go there, I could quickly you know, you know look at what's there. Um, I like that you know I don't want too many layers. That's the thing. And Instagram has to be very careful if they're going to implement this again. This is only in testing right now. Uh, if they are going to implement this, you know they have to be very careful about doing that. I don't like the idea of, for instance, like you know taking people off the site as much. Um, I'd love to see something like kind of like what we talked about last week where, you know, Twitter has that feature where if you tap on a follower on iOS, it quickly does the pop up over top of the content. You can close it and then go right back into uh, where you were at. I'd love to see that actually come to Instagram, I think. Yeah, that's that'd be good. That'd be good. So and I think uh, it's coming. You know, we've we've talked about Linktree and Campfire in the past mm -hmm. for some opportunities to drive people to websites. Now, if they do this, this could really keep people on platform, making the Instagram even more addictive, which, you know, we all need to be able to spend more money. Right. That's just fantastic. So yeah, one, one thing I was wondering, too, is, you know, what what is their main uh, goal out of this? Because I know their official spokesperson said, no, we're not testing this, which they, they've said in the past for features that are just internal. Um, but it seems like there's been a lot of uh, a lot of speculation and a lot of discussion around copyright of images and, and who is the copyright holder and people that are re-gramming re and, and reposting things. You know, how does that fall into the legality of it all? So, you know, I, I can see collections being a good way to get around a lot of that and allow people to curate content that they do want to share with their audience, but not necessarily, you know, try to present it as their own or, or something that could be construed as presenting as their own. Yeah, here's hoping, right? Because that that is a sticky wicket and we'll see if uh, we'll see where that goes. But that's really good. To, really good to think about there, Alex. Really good insight, buddy. And by the way, uh, there are tools out there that, you know, if you want to get an image that you want to regram, you can actually get the copyright holder permission before you do that, um, some of these tools. So definitely, you know, definitely, though, great point. I mean, something to keep in mind. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, let's, Christian, let's move on to the other one that's related to this, because I think this interesting, right? Uh, or is it? Pinteresting with <laughs> Pinterest of filing confidentially, which is kind of weird. Like, why would you not want to make a splash about the fact that you're going public? Maybe they think that being sneaky is more powerful that somebody, you know, like TechCrunch is not going to see that. I mean, come on. Maybe right? it's one of those things like, oh, well, you know, I've got this party on the weekend. Don't tell anybody. But yeah, you, know, you want to hype it up. So you just kind of keep it hush hush. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Well, you used to be a party promoter, Alex. So you know all about this, man. You think that's what Pinterest is doing or what, what do you think's going on here? 
I mean, maybe a, a lot of these companies have done that. I think, you know, Lyft, Uber, uh, there's been a handful of companies recently that do this confidential filing um, before they really start to, to make the hype train go. But I mean, it gets people like us, people that are bloggers or people that are in the space talking mm -hmm. and chattering. So, you know, who knows, maybe they are taking a page out of the old party promoter's handbook. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What do you think, Christian? I, I think this is a good move. I think that overall, you know, it does make me wonder uh, with Instagram, for instance, essentially copying a feature that Pinterest already has with their collection. Um, it does make me wonder whether, you know, Facebook, for instance, would come out and maybe buy them outright, maybe either before they go public or, you know, right uh, shortly after. So hmm. that's, yeah, that's interesting. That that would be an interesting move, right? Because typically when you go public, you want to pay your investors back. And what better way to do that than to get a billion dollars worth of cash influx from Facebook, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it, it could be seen as a way to kind of get their valuation out there. Um, so, you know, get all this media, get all this hype and increase their valuation before going for a buyout. So that would be interesting. Hmm. That is interesting. You know, I, I think overall, I mean, here's the thing, Pinterest, and I think we've always talked about this, Phil, like it's not a social media channel that like we talk a lot about. There's a lot of utility in it. Um, but, you know, here's the thing. They seem to make a lot of revenue uh, because, you know, they're like they have a very uh, built in, you know, user base. Um, so I think that, you know, I think this is a good move by them. I mean, they're basically just kind of like, you know, flying under the radar while on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and WhatsApp, you know, basically mostly owned properties by Facebook and Pinterest is kind of doing their thing. So um, I, I like this. I mean, if you're watching, what, what do you guys think? Do you think Pinterest going public is a good thing? Um, I, will, I will definitely hear what everybody has to say. Yeah. Wow. Well, so first we got Barb Tomlin says confidentiality is turned into a marketing term, which <laughs> tells you where marketing scruples are going. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate, right? That That's totally true. That that, But I would say the age of the embargoed story is nearly over. I mean, that's just ridiculous to think that you could tell somebody something and they wouldn't report on it. I mean, nobody signs an NDA uh, for sure. I think that's that's folly uh, on that. And then Katie says, Katie Miller says, Pinterest is her go-to to search. And I, I, that's that's so interesting that every one of these, right? Every one of these now is a search engine. Every social platform is its own search engine, not as indexed as well by Google, but indexed by themselves, which makes sense yeah. because that way they don't have to rely on Google for their monetization which I think is wicked smart, wicked smart. I would love though to see like, for instance, Instagram, they have a feature to be able to add, you know, the alternate text, uh, but it's mainly there for an excess from an accessibility perspective. I'd love to see that actually tie into Google because if somebody's going to search for something, they're not going to Instagram or, you know, in Katie's case, she's going to Pinterest, but they're not going to Instagram. They're not going to Facebook to look it up necessarily. They're going to Google is typically their first place. It would be great if they could pull up like the images and then drive somebody back to that channel to be able to then, you know, get directly to that post. Um, but you know, again, we'll see if that ever happens. Do you yeah. think? That, do you think that's really the case, though? Do you think people are not going to to Instagram or Pinterest or the channel to to search for people? Because I got to tell you, a lot of people, even when they go to Google, they're just typing in a web address and it's popping up. And I see more and more. This is going to be voice search, right? Open Pinterest and then do a search. That's what I think is going to happen, right? Oh, oh, you know, hey, Siri, open up Pinterest like it's going to do right now. And then it's going to, from there, then it's going to, then what's it going to do? It's going to search. I think it, I think oh. it depends on the platform, though, because, I mean, you know, there's been a lot of times I've, I've seen people that they're searching for a craft idea or, or a room decorating tip, and they'll actually go to Google and type Pinterest, you know, how to make a painting out of crayons or, you know, something like that. Huh. Because because people know how powerful Google search is, um, and a lot of these, especially Pinterest, Pinterest has put a lot of time into developing their SEO strategy to sh to rank highly on Google. So I mean, we're we're almost training people to go to Google first, and I think you know obviously that's what Google wants. Yeah. But uh, but you brought up a good point earlier about the uh, you know I'm a data storyteller. Why why would all these people want to be search engines? It's because that's how you measure user intent you can see you know sweeping trends 
you can have a lot of valuable information and that information has is quickly becoming the new currency um, you know in the business world where the more you know about your consumers or potential consumers uh, or prospects the more monetization opportunity there is so that's you know it's definitely it's, it's been cool to watch this kind of uh you know mad, mad grab look, look at amazon for example they you know they have super razor thin margins but they know everything about what you do what you want what you will want uh, it's it's almost kind of creepy but it's cool when you get those personalized recommendations that you're like wow i didn't know i wanted this but i do want this well, it's predictive too, right? I mean, that's the interesting thing. I think where we're going to is this going to offer that automated intelligence that, you know, that uh, artificial or augmented or whatever you want to call the A and the AI, that it's going to get even stronger. I mean, people looking at Amazon now, if you, if you, like nine months ago, you searched for a pregnancy test, well, chances are in nine months, you're going to have a baby. If then the next thing you look at is baby clothes. Mm -hmm. And if not, then instead you look at contraception. Well, maybe now you're not having a baby anymore. So I think that's that's really interesting. The intent of a search can be really, really uh, the powerful thing of that. Not just the search itself. Where did it start? Where did it end? Where did it go? All this stuff, really fascinating stuff. Yeah, I saw in the comments that it was like Barb Tomlin says, uh, look what happened to Yahoo. And I mean, that's a good point. You know, it's it's another thing to not only have this data for monetization, but you have to use this data to understand what your users want, what your users are, uh, you know, what appeals to your users and what's the next direction you go. Because like we talked about earlier, the whole purpose of you know going back to Instagram is seeing this really nice user generated content. So if they start to put in links and things, and they get that feedback that users hate it, they've got to quickly act. So it's, you know, it's also a good way to get that voice of customer uh, research. So you don't go the way of like Barb pointed out of Yahoo or Alta Vista or Ask Come on, TV. man, I'm still, use, I'm still using Lycos to get all my uh, stuff. That's mine, was, mine was web crawler. I remember being in high school and uh, a buddy of mine was like, oh, you got to use Google. Why are you still using web crawler? And I was like, Google, let me see what this is. I looked up the website. And it was just, you know, very simple, one text box and the logo. And I was like, this is too simple. This is never going to catch on. And, well, <laughs> I, guess, I guess I was wrong. That's why I don't invest in stocks. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. What are you thinking, Christian? Uh, by the um, well, actually, what I was trying to do actually for everybody was if they want to actually do a site search, uh, I was actually trying to uh, show you guys how you can quickly do that from Google because you guys have me interested here. At, you know, uh, being able to, for instance, go to Google, type site colon, for instance, Pinterest.com, and then the keyword, and they'll actually pull up um, Pinterest boards uh, that that are going off of this. So, you know, I, I think overall, I mean, um, I, I love all the suggestions you're making, uh, both of you. So, yeah. Interesting, interesting stuff. We got a lot of good folks chiming in. We got a lot of comments so far. We're great to see that you're here, folks. So uh, Tim Sohn asked if we're doing Alexa flash briefings. Uh, we do have one actually for Social Chef. So you should check that out for the social chatter. Check that out over on our website. What's that URL, Christian? Uh, you can go to socialchefs.com forward slash Alexa, and that'll actually have it where you can uh, do the installation. Awesome. Awesome. So check that out. And also, if you're still old school and you still like email like I do, because frankly, you know, I'm too old to not like email, go to socialchefs.com slash daily. Sign up. You get our daily tips. Christian puts this together for you. Just one tip, one thing you can do to make your business a little better. That's socialchefs.com slash daily to get the daily email. And sure, sign up for Alexa Flash Briefing anything you want here uh we will maybe at some point we'll do some flashbacks for you we'll take a trip back in time with ask jeeves alta visca lycos and uh everything else so we'll certainly see how uh how that plays out so can we can we please do an episode in the future you, you know how i love time travel so maybe we can break out the uh way way back machine and uh and look up some of these old social media websites back you know many years ago when they first started Absolutely. It'll be a retro show. Everybody show up in your disco ball and your your bell bottoms and your platform shoes. And uh, we'll bring you on camera then so you can play with us. That'd be that'd be perfect, Alex. Nice. That'd be perfect. So cool. So hey, so along with that, right, we're talking a little bit about about Instagram, a little bit about Pinterest. But now let's talk about Facebook Messenger now cluttering it up with more and more formatting. 
Icky poo. I'm not a fan of this at all. Don't re- don't really like this. This feels like GeoCities to me. Chris Fire, who's commenting on my watch party, says GeoCities. So totally reminds me of that. Uh, my Angel Fire site is still up. I'm not thinking this is a good thing. What do you think, Christian? Are you a are you a formatting fan? Um, I like it for certain things. So, for example, you know, as you and I like, we always talk about like, well, what are the topics and the tools and stuff we're going to be covering each week? It'd be nice to have some formatting from that perspective. You know, a bulleted list. Um, but you know, overall, not necessarily a formatting fan. Uh, from you know, when I'm talking like Messenger. Now, I think that this is actually a useful feature in the sense that it's being done in Markdown. So that's actually how I write all, all of our blogs. They're done in Markdown, and Markdown is basically just a very lightweight way to to write. So, for example, if you want to make a bulleted list, it's like you type in a Markdown editor. It's basically, it's a text editor with like, you know, star for instance, and then like the text. And as you do more, you know, the star, for example, uh, or asterisk, um, what it will do is it will format it into a bulleted list for you automatically. So you can basically type from mobile device, from a laptop, you know, from anything basically um, in Markdown. So that's what I really like about it uh, from that perspective. Hey, and Lisa doesn't have it yet. So maybe we'll get this in the United States before they get it over there in Australia. Good, Lisa. We, We don't want you to get any more features until we get to play with them first. We're just really jealous over here in the States. And Christian, Christian gets his, he'll get it in five years. That'll come out for him. So, <laughs> yeah. So what about you there, Alex? Are you going to use Markdown to send your wife love notes or what? Uh, all, any way I can send her love notes, I'm always going to utilize the next best thing. Um, I, I love Markdown and I love, you know, being able to format text. So I know that you kind of threw it back to GeoCities, but uh, I use Slack a lot. And I think that this is something that Facebook as a platform says, we've got to start competing with Ooh. Slack and HipChat, some of these new uh, you know, players on the scene for communication. Because, you know, if you look at it, it's just, you know, yes, they adopted stickers and GIFs and things like that, but mm-hmm. they, they haven't really made that many improvements in the way that you communicate through the, the chat app. So I think this is a good step in the right direction because, you know, like Christian said, if you send out a block of text with instructions for an upcoming podcast or something like that, you want to be able to have, a, you know, headers or at least bolded text and then lists uh, bulleted or numbered. Um, I, I think it's a good thing. I think that as long as they don't go over the top with it, you know, as long as you aren't able to customize your mouse cursor and, you know, throw in a bunch of, you know, craziness. Like that, that's what I think when you said GeoCities, it reminded me to like the MySpace days when you can customize everything about anything. Um, so I don't really foresee Facebook putting in custom chat backgrounds or, or anything like that. So I well, think we already have those though. We already have those. You can already change the color of our, of our message, right? We can make our groupie pink or green or orange. I mean, yeah. that's kind of a custom background. True, it's, not, true. it's not, you know, it's not as big, uh, but your point about Slack, Boy, now, you know what? That I didn't think about that. And I think that's brilliant, Alex, because this makes Facebook at work. Forget about the, the consumer side, but let's talk about Facebook at work, which a lot of people are not thinking about when they think about all the Facebook changes, right? Yeah. Some of these, my guess is they roll them out first commercially, see if there's any viability, see how smart you have to be. And then, you know, and by that, I, I don't mean that people that don't know how to do this are dumb, but I'm just talking savviness, right? If you don't know how to use markup now, well, maybe they add just a quick ribbon bar that makes it a little bit easier for folks so that it becomes a, a little bit more uh, useful. And then they roll it on Facebook at work to go yeah. head to head with Slack. Boy, well, that's, that's, that's I don't know. Have you seen the, the Facebook workplace platform? Yeah. So yeah it's yeah. something they tried to use at my, my workplace for a while. It never caught on. Um, and maybe it's for some of those reasons, but you know, Facebook, think about how they monetize. They are making money when you're on their platform, when your eyes are glued to your phone or your computer. Um, and the workplace or a lot of the old, st- old style environments where people are working on computers, but they're not allowed to access Facebook or things like that. That's a huge, uh, you know, that's a huge gap in, in their monetization. So. I could. That's a great point, Phil. I think that they could definitely be trying to strengthen the chat platform so that they can make some moves into the B two B space. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, Christian? I would say here's the thing. I, I think we really just need to look at one company, and I think that's actually WeChat. Mm. You know, look at 
look at the direction they are going because I have a feeling that's the model that Facebook is going to be trying to copy. Uh, basically, because you know, WeChat is basically an all-in-one, one-stop shop for people over in China, basically using social media. So um, hmm. WeChat is in payments, it's in messaging, like everything is done under that same platform. And I think Facebook's that's the direction they need to go. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, the single single platform for everything, uh, the whole business thing. I think it didn't catch on. You're right, Alex, is because a lot of people they're worried about their private data spilling over. Yeah. So I think that's one of the reasons it didn't catch on. But as we get more and more of this, and it's clear because having played with Facebook at work, it is clear there is no crossover. There are no ads. Mm -hmm. You're paying for the platform. You're not paying for advertising. And it's very mm -hmm. different, very different and yet very familiar, which I think is pretty darn cool. Yeah, but I think that, you know, it, it also brings up the, the issue – Think about all the headlines that have happened recently with you know Facebook saying, hey, we're going to merge all of our messenger platforms so you can chat between Facebook and Instagram and, and, and um, WhatsApp. That made a lot of people really nervous. It made a lot of people uncomfortable. And you know, I could see something like that lingering and them saying, OK, well, what if you know, I start using this Facebook business platform and then you know, a year down the road, they're like, oh, we're going to merge all your data. And, then it's like, is HR gonna is HR gonna hear all the crap that I've been talking about? You know, Becky over in in accounting or, or whatever. Not a real person, by the way. Yeah, but. Becky with the bad hair is not on your team. That's yeah. good. We'll uh, have that disclaimer. She's not part of your lunch pool. <laughs> exactly. So, what are you thinking, Christian? Um, overall, I think that you know, I, I I tend to agree with you actually, Alex, as far as like the direction that Facebook uh, or at least users think about Facebook. Um, you know, they've got a pretty big uphill uh, battle here, you know, to try to win back users, you know, and, and people I know are, they are concerned about, you know, when you tie something into your work, for example, you know, how does that actually impact me? So um, I, I think that it's definitely a concern. I like the fact that they would actually consider merging things, you know, they do need to move people, um, you know, but they do have to win people back, I think. That's the yeah. Thing. Yeesh. Yeesh, yeesh. Yeah. So we'll see. So interestingly, Barb Tomlin leads us right into our next topic about Facebook groups. She says long-term success gets down to relationship building, which translates to building community and within communication modules on these platforms for Facebook, it is groups. And I'm curious if it's groups, is it messenger? Is it like a Slack like interface? I don't know. But Barb, you make a really good point. And interestingly, Facebook is continuing to pivot in these groups and they've got a new big, this is a pretty darn big rollout. If you haven't seen this folks, this is really interesting. All the changes that they're making to groups to try to bring the world closer together, in my opinion, so they can better monetize groups, but we'll see. So uh, Alex, you read this article too, man. What are you thinking about this? So, I mean, I, I think that their mission or their stated mission is spot on. So, not to go into self-promotion mode, but that's the whole reason that I built the startup that I built was because social media platforms, as we know them today, are monetization machines. They, they all kind of chose this advertising model and their success depends on people being glued to their feeds. So if you're not looking at your Facebook feed, they're not making money. And that in itself, I think, has caused a lot of societal shifts to where, you know, my wife and I have to go on social media diets sometimes because we noticed that we were sitting there in the room, both staring at our phone, you know, while our, while my daughter's tugging at my leg. And, and that's crazy. So, you know, social media, the term social implies that you're socializing with other people. And I think that these technologies have promised to connect us together, but they kind of, uh, you have to look at who, where is their money coming from and it's coming from the advertisers. So it's, it's really more important to them that we're on the platform interacting um, than it is face to face. So this move for not to get too long winded, but this move to um, really strengthen the community's features, I think is a good move. Um, you've seen uh, in the bottom navigation on the Facebook app, they, I think they added the, the groups feature or the groups button now. And you can see how, how big of a, a rise that groups have had over the last few years. Um, some of these features, 
I think are encouraging the kind of face-to-face -face interaction that they can tell that their users are missing out on. And, and I think that's huge. I think it's a, a great step in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Christian? You think this is big? Uh, I definitely think that the updates to groups are big because, you know, for example, they're trying to help, you know, here's the thing. When you run a Facebook group, one of the biggest challenges that you often have is really the management of it. Um, so I'm kind of glad that they're actually, you know, moving in that direction, trying to make it easier for you to you know, manage your group, stay on top of who all's in the group, who's engaged, who's not engaged. You know, for instance, they're, uh, let's see, they're adding, for instance, post formatting tools. So we talked about some formatting earlier. Uh, they're talking about ways to manage your groups. Like, for example, how do you inform members if they violate like your rules? They're talking about having rules in the group, almost like, like a bit of a club, you know, like, hey, you join this group, here's our bylaws, that type of thing. Um, filtering of data, you know, the ability to search through membership requests for people. So I think this is a really good update overall. I think that, you know, Facebook groups are a very useful feature, um, but, you know, it, it's one of those things that like, I don't think it's very clear to a lot of people how they use a Facebook page, how they use a Facebook group, how that stuff kind of merges together. Uh, but I think this is a really useful feature. That's a great point. So, um... I think we, Phil and I have a mutual friend, Josh Woodson. I did a podcast with him a while back about, I have a Facebook group for time travel enthusiasts and we have about 20,000 people in the group and it became super unwieldy to manage all of that. And, you know, you have people that are really passionate about it, uh, which is, it's a, it's a fun group, but you had a lot of people spamming and, you know, trying to advertise for their books and their blogs and their pages. So I had to actually bring in a couple of moderators to help me, you know, filter through all that. But uh, these new these new tools to manage the platform a little bit better and easier, I think, are huge. Uh, one of the features that I thought was really cool. Did you guys read about the uh, the what do they call it? Mentorship or the Mentorship Connect? Yeah. Yep. That's huge. I mean, I've I, so I I used to volunteer with a, a networking group called Add to Tampa Bay. And we had a mentorship program where we would connect people that were, you know, further along in their executive uh, advertising career with students mm -hmm. and, and younger professionals. And that was a super powerful program. So I'm, I'm really interested to see how that translates to an online platform and how many people actually start to leverage that functionality. Yeah, we'll definitely see there. I mean, there's it's interesting, you know, uh, Someone on my watch party here, Chris Fire, says that they're stealing from Reddit on this tool. Uh, but I think the the more we give admins the ability to feel like they're in control, the more time they spend on the platform feeding their community, which hopefully then will keep the community more alive. But I mm -hmm. really, you know, my challenge here is Facebook keeps doing things that make it look like they're acting in our best interests. When in reality, they're just really trying to get more data. And so it's interesting to see, you know, uh, to your point, Alex, uh, is this, you know, is this going to replace in person? I don't think so. No. I don't think I don't think it's close, but that's what Facebook's trying to make it sound like. And, and I got to tell you, as much as I enjoyed Ready Player One, I'm not ready for that type of world yet. Christian, yeah. what about you, buddy? Uh, definitely. I, I think Ready Player One. Yeah, it, it was a good movie, um, but definitely there's a lot. A long way for us to go i think uh, before we get there so yeah cool 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 so there's lots of stuff you know we could have covered this week lots of news and if you want to make sure that you stay up with that check out socialchefs.com daily so you can get your daily dose of social media goodness what's changing what's happening keep up with our guests keep up with us and see what's there so it's socialchefs.com daily sign up one email a day not a lot but it'll keep you fed so now it's my favorite part of the show. It's tool time. Woohoo! We're talking about some tools, 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 tools. And one of the tools that we're talking about is Alex's lunch pool tool. So Alex, what is lunch pool, man? Why is it so awesome and how can we get it? Um, so lunch pool is a very simple concept, um, kind of like we were just talking about. Our one goal is to get people face to face interacting with one another, building connections. Uh, because I think it's so powerful to have that kind of uh, strong network that you can only build by meeting people in person. So what we propose is an app that you can onboard and show people your professional interests, your personal interests, um, you know, all the different things about you that make you yourself. And you can connect with other people who are like minded for 
like carpooling, it's lunch pooling. So you go with multiple people, you go have lunch. Um, it's, you know, a little bit social, but, but mostly, you know, it's, it's, it's about real life. You want to build those real life connections with the people around you. Um, and, and we want to help facilitate those meaningful lunch breaks. We don't want to be the ready player one world where, you know, it's already starting to happen. Look, if you work in an office, look around you during the lunch break and you have everybody's continuing to work huddled over their computer, eating a salad or a, or a snack bar. We want people, you know, to get into the break room, get out of the office completely and, and go have these meaningful connections um, to get to, to know people on a personal level. Cool. Cool. We think that's, that's really important, right? I mean, social media is great, but it takes a lot more than just social media. So these in-person interactions are fantastic, real easy to do. Christian dropped a link there. Folks, if you're looking to have more in-person facilitated interaction, check out Lunch Pool. Give it a shot. If you got feedback, give it to Alex. It's really a cool app. It's got some great things happening there. Headquartered here in Tampa, Florida with yeah. Alex and his team. So cool. Cool, cool. So, Christian, you got any friends that you want to go to lunch with besides uh, me and Alex over there where you are, buddy? Uh, that would actually be pretty awesome. But, yeah, definitely, things are definitely a little different. So, yeah, yeah. So that's all right. So we'll do we'll do lunch pool when you come back over here, you Orlandonian, and when you're oh, natively good. from here. So let's do that. We'll start a social, so, social media enthusiast's lunch pool. There we go. Whoop, whoop. So tool number two this week is one that Alex actually talked about at the end of 2018 when we talked about our social media predictions for 2019. Um, his tool that he was sharing was called Real Time Board. And so, um, Alex, do you want to actually tell viewers what Real Time Board does, how it can help their business? Definitely. So Real Time Board is something uh, a developer friend of mine showed me a while back. And, uh, you know, I've always been very much into mind mapping. Um, if you're familiar with mind mapping, it's you start with an idea, you branch off with related ideas and you just kind of keep going. So it's a way to kind of free flow brainstorm, but, but visually, and then you have a, a record of it afterwards. Well, I was telling them about how I like to do that activity and he showed me real time board and it was, it was kind of life changing. So with this tool, um, imagine having a whiteboard, but it's accessible to everybody on your team. Um, anybody can jump on it's real time. You can see the mouse cursors. So my team actually uses it with, with lunch pool and we, um, you know, we do all kind of planning. So we've done our business planning exercises on it. Uh, we did some of our whiteboarding for the actual user interface and uh, user experience mockups. Um, there's a whole ton of, of features that you can have. Uh, one of which I really like you can, go from real life to online. So we kind of talked about the opposite, but you can have a bunch of post-it notes on your wall, which, you know, it's kind of become a, a cool thing to do now. Um, mm -hmm. You can snap a picture of that and it'll translate it into the, uh, into your board. Very cool. Wow. That's very cool. Wow. That's really cool, man. Bringing the real life online and that, yeah, holy cow, man, that when you can bring the meat space online, that's uh that's definitely something pretty cool, man. Pretty, pretty cool. And that's nice that you use this because I have to tell you, once you mention it, you know, it's something that I that I took a look at. But then the the month the team one with five members is really interesting that you can use for 50 bucks. It's got a lot of, you know, it's got a lot of integrations. And what I think is fascinating is we're starting to see that a lot of the stuff that Google brought out with Google Wave is now mm -hmm. coming back. Right. This yep. is a Google Wave total ripoff of what oh, yeah. Google Wave had. And just fascinating that we all, you know, not not the three of us, but a lot of people totally made fun of Google Wave when it came out. And now it's like, whoa. Yeah, I think that Google Wave was maybe before its time because I thought it was really cool, but it never it never seemed to catch on. And then it was gone, you know, within the blink of an eye. So it's uh it's one of those testaments to, you know, a good idea is a good idea, but you gotta have the timing right and the market's gotta be ready. So uh, I think, you know, I've and seen a lot bandwidth. Of and bandwidth, let's not forget, right? That's I think that's what killed Google Wave because yeah. we weren't on mobile phones. There wasn't an app. Bandwidth was slow. I mean, I remember, you know, it was a big deal that we got wireless at an event. Yeah. Like, ooh, well, now if you go somewhere and there's no wireless, you're probably you're probably not staying there very long. If 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 you're trying to work, right? Yeah. No, that's a good point. So maybe the technology had to keep up with uh, the user demands. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, maybe it's about data mining, right? Maybe there wasn't enough. Maybe there was people were freaked out by the level of privacy that they were that they were seeing there as well. So Chris Fire mentions that possibly is something. Uh, he said that in, in my little watch party here. It's something. Maybe maybe it is. Maybe it's privacy. But yeah, we certainly have given up a lot of that privacy to get some cool tools for sure. Yeah, and you know, and overall, I mean, this is a, a tool that you know it's a bit for free, a free plan here that limits you obviously to the number of boards um, as well as the types of integrations. As Phil mentioned, you've got the team plan. And then there's also this one at the bottom, which I think is really useful for a lot of small business and medium business owners. Or if you're an agency, for example, and you want to work with clients, it's $15 per user per month or $144 a year uh, per user. It's about $12 a month. So, um, you know, this way you kind of try out the free plan, see how it works. Consider, you know, if you think it saves you some time, consider incorporating, you know, maybe the team plan um, or looking at, if you're an agency, the um, consultant model. So, yeah. so those are the tools that I have for everybody this week. Um, but yeah, very useful tools, I think, from a business perspective. Uh, anything you want to add, Phil or Alex, on those tools? Chris, I, sent you a link. Yeah. I was going to say real quick, I sent you a link. I don't know if you want to pull it up and give them just like a peek at... Uh... Like this is a little behind the scenes at what some of my UX uh, designers, I don't know if that link will work for you, um, but just kind of, you can zoom in and out quickly and you can see the kind of stuff in there. I really like it because they, they have some templates that show you, okay, here's a user journey mapping template, or here's a business model canvas template. So a lot of the things, you know, the buzzwords and the cool processes that you hear in the business world, they have the yeah. templates to kind of get you started on those, on those uh, paths, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick, actually. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I think as much as we like to think that we want to start with a blank whiteboard, what we really want to start with is we want to start with something that we can visualize and then move from there, right? We want to see something conceptually before we move into something even, you know, even better. Yeah. I think that, I mean, as, a, as kind of a visual storyteller, that's, that's the whole key is to get what's in your mind into the rest of the team's mind and, and vice versa. So that you can collaborate and come up with uh, a shared vision. And so, you know, vision in itself, it's, it's the root, the root word or the root of that is visual. You have to, you have to be able to see it in your head and what better way than, you know, seeing it online. Interesting. Definitely. Yeah. Really good stuff, man. Really good stuff. So uh, I don't know that we're going to be able to bring that up because it looks like we've got to go through some, a bunch of stuff here to, to get these, uh, to get uh, this. In. But it's really interesting uh, that we can, you know, that we can see that I, now that I'm, now that I've poked in, it's looks like a lot of stick yellow stickies, which is oh, yeah. really neat, right? It's really simple uh, to access those. I, that's really fascinating, Alex. There's a lot of stuff there, man. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. And folks, if you want to check that out, just sign sign up for a real time board and just poke around, see what's see what's possible. You got a lot more there than you probably realize. Um, and find a friend to, to you know maybe lose, use lunch pool to find a friend that you can collaborate over lunchtime with and make a real time board for yourself. What do you think, I Alex? I love it. I love it. I think that you could put up menus, uh, different restaurants that you want to go to. Um, TV shows that you guys can talk about. There's a there's a world of options there. There you go, Christian. What are you thinking, buddy? Lots of opportunities, I think, with both tools uh, that we have for everybody this week. Um, I'd suggest, you know, again, signing up for the beta for Lunch Pool, and then for um, Real Time Board. Give it a try. I mean, here's the thing: a lot of people, you know, if if, if you just show somebody the screen of it, like, I mean, I think it's a very useful tool. Um, so give it a try. It's free. Like I said, free to sign up and free to try and then see if there's any utility for your business. Awesome, awesome. Well, Alex, you're a great guest, man. How do people find more out about you? How do they get connected with you? Um, I, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn, so you can just look me up on LinkedIn. It's uh, Alexander Abel. It's my my crazy professional name. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just connect with me. I mean, I'm on the different social channels. I underscore am underscore Abel, A-B-E-L-L, -L, on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and then, yeah, just connect with me. I love talking to people. I love hearing your ideas. Um, this app, you know, lunch pool is so new that we're welcome. We welcome any and all feedback. I just, I'm really passionate about connecting people. Um, uh, you know, Phil and I met a year ago and we've, you know, we've had so much great 
interaction come from that simple, you know, happenstance meeting. Um, I want to facilitate more of those meetings in the world. So, you know, social media is a great way to connect, but then I challenge everybody to take it offline, go have lunch with people, go have coffee, you know, meet face to face, go to a meetup group. Um, because that's, that's where a lot of the magic happens. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Yeah. Alexander Abel, that's A B E L L. Thankfully, Christian just dropped a link for you so you can check that out. But do get to know Alex. Check out Lunchpool. Give him feedback. Get smarter and have lunch with your friends and people that you wouldn't otherwise know. So, Christian, you get the last word, buddy. What's going on? So uh, I just want to say it's a pleasure having you on again, Alex, and dropping some serious knowledge. Same to you, Phil, as well. Um, Next week, we're going to be joined by uh, Troy. And find Troy, uh, baby. Yeah, Troy Sandage. I love Troy. He's super smart from uh, the Chicagoland area. Wicked smart guy. If you are not following him on Twitter and Instagram at find Troy, you're missing out. He's speaking at a bunch of different events. Really, really smart guy. He often co-hosts on Appy Hour or uh, Mobile Chat Live with myself or Ann Wynn. Uh, So just a great guy. Definitely check us out next week. At the same time. So we're doing this early morning thing. If you're an East Coaster, it's 8 a.m. If you're somewhere else, it's even earlier. But for Christian, it's the middle of the day. So this works out. He's wide awake and bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And we're glad that you joined us today. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thank you, Alex. We appreciate you, brother. So we'll have a blog post recap going out tomorrow for everybody who is watching. Again, you can get that by going to socialchef.com forward slash daily, sign up for the daily newsletter, and I will be sure you get that email. So thanks a lot for joining. We will see you all next week. Thanks, everyone, everyone. for joining. A lot of great comments. Appreciate y'all. See you later. Bye-bye.